All right, what I'd like to go over today is marking uh, the base posterior. Before we get into the particulars about that, I'd like to uh, talk about what we call a head tilt. Uh, before you can determine whether your base posterior is actually a usable image, you need to know whether you have head tilt. And the base posterior is the only x-ray in the Blair series where we want to take out their natural head carriage. Why is that important? Um, if you have big head tilt in the image and you mark the base posterior convergence angles, you're going to get bad information. And obviously, this work is all about precision. So, um, in determining whether you have head tilt or not, what you want to do is you want to find two like areas on the BP. Um, these areas right in here you'll see similar structures so you want to find the same structures on both sides mark two points and then so here we have this V like structure right here we're going to mark the apex of that and then if we go over here to the other side um, you will see the same V like structure and right there we'll mark that point and then what you want to do is set your ruler uh, with those two points and mark from the point to the outer margin of the skull and from that point and to the outer margin of the skull and that line should be within an eighth of an inch uh, on both sides if you're more than an eighth of an inch then you gotta retake the picture because you're not within the parameters of giving you proper convergence angles so I've already measured this one. This one is actually one eighth of an inch. I'm not going to do that just to save time. Let's get into the marking. So base posterior, we're looking at um, the right joint and left joint of the condyle. And remember when we're marking a base posterior, here's the right marker here on the right side. Uh, so we know this is the right and that's the left. And you see two earplugs here. Um, that's how we're going to reference our convergence angles and we'll get to that in a second. So the first uh, point that we mark is anterior one, and that's actually the junction between the anterior arch and the lateral mass. And you can see right about here, you see a kink. So you're looking for that indentation where the anterior arch meets the lateral mass. So the left anterior point one is right there. And then if we follow this left lateral mass around, you can see that it kinks right there. And one thing you'll notice about this base post here, talking about asymmetry, you see that the left lateral mass is much anterior of the right lateral mass. Um, might be how they're built, might be osseous asymmetry. Anyway, so anterior one here, anterior one here. Posterior point one is the junction uh, between the frame and magnum and the lateral mass. So I always come down here to the posterior margin. You can see that very clearly that the frame and magnum is here, and you want to follow this around. And I bring that up through the lateral mass, and where those two meet, that's posterior point one, right there. And then we'll follow this other one up, coming around. And you can see this lateral mass coming around through here, and where those intersect, that's posterior. Point one. So our next uh, job is going to be marking the lateral margin of both of these joints. And the easiest way to go about doing this is come up to the anterior tubercle. It's usually clearly defined. And we want to be careful not to mark all the way around uh, the joint in this one. But you can come around to the anterior arch and with a dashed line start to mark that outer margin here. Usually, not always, but usually it's going to pass through the frame and magnum there. I'm sorry, the inner transversarium or transverse frame in there halfway most of the time, not always. Now on this one, you don't see it so much, but a lot of time the vertebral artery comes, as you know, over the posterior arch. And you, a lot of times, are going to see this part dip in here. Don't let that fool you that think you're missing something. Dr. Harpkins and talking to him talks about this a lot, uh, that you'll see that dip in there. So if you get a dip here and a, on the Blair views, that's what creates point one and two. And uh, that makes that's for another video, but just side note. So 
come over here, here is the outer margin again. We're scraping this all the way around to here. Coming around here. And so now we've got the outer margin marked. We've got anterior one, posterior one. Now what we want to do is we want to connect anterior one and posterior one. Inscribe a line, do it on the other side. Now we've got, we want to do it a little neater than that. Let's redo that. So again, we want to connect these dots. There we go. Now what you want to do is you want to draw a, draw a perpendicular line from anterior one to the outer margin of the lateral mass which you've marked, which is right there. And then posterior point one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to draw a perpendicular line to that line we described. And you're going to make a dot on the outer margin. You're going to make a dot here. We'll go to the other side. We'll do the same thing. We'll go to posterior point one on the left. Again, draw a perpendicular. And make those dots. Now, now what we want to do is we want to bisect those two points. So anterior one and anterior two. We're going to want to bisect those. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Half of seven is three and a half. One, two, three. Split the difference right here. There's the point for the convergence angle. We're going to do the same thing here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here this time. Split the difference. You got four. One, two, three, four. Now we want to connect both of those dots. This is going to make our right convergence angle. There we go. We're going to come over here to the left joint. We're going to bisect that line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. So half of eight is four. Make a dot. Bisect our last line here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you'll notice these are not going to be always the same on both the lines because the joints are different. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, so four and a half, one, two, three, four. There we go. Connect these two dots. There's our left convergence angle. Now you've got the earplug line uh, that we've got to scribe, and you want to make sure you mark the same dots. I always take this where that ear tube or plug connects to that washer there on both sides. You want to make sure you're at the same exact area. Scribe a line. So, that earplug line, uh, when we take the Blair views, is a reference point. It makes sure that when we're taking that Blair view down both of those angles, that we're lining that patient up in the same exact area that we took that angle off of, which again is the earplug line. Now, this is a part that confuses um, a lot of people zero degrees is going to be perpendicular to that earplug line. So if that joint is straight forward, that's going to be zero degrees. If it's turned this way, that's 10, 20, 30, 40, right? So put that protractor right on that earplug line. 90 is this way. We're going to count. We are going to count. 90 is our zero line. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. We're 29 on the left. Measure the left convergence angle. 
Again, going to 90 is our zero mark. That joint is turned to the right. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 degrees on the left. So there you have it. There's your base posterior. Your next step in uh, taking the Blair series is going to be to shoot the Blair views down both of those angles, and we'll do that on another video.